Hey, hi everybody. My name is Jerry Wise, and I'm a life and relationship coach. I've been working to help people for about 45 years, and I hope that you will subscribe, like, comment uh, on my YouTube channel. I hope you'll join us. And uh, this video is entitled, Four Ways to Fight Back the Family. And I had shared a video before on when the family attacks. And this is a video that talks about fighting back the family within us. And I wanted to share four things that would be, I think, helpful for people to think about. I'm not giving three easy steps uh, because I, I really don't believe very much in quick fixes. I mean, there are some things we can do that can help rather quickly, but most of the time these problems are long-standing, they're deep within us, and are not just fixed by doing A, B, and C. Uh, we have to think about it more, we have to work at this more. And it's kind of a road less traveled when you take the road of self-differentiation, uh, which I've always appreciated because I felt it has helped me the most uh, to make changes in my own life. Fighting back the family inside us is about stabilizing ourselves. It's about uh, gaining personal power, personal authority within the system. Not personal authority over the system or personal power over the system. There are, the family's already trying to control the system and to control you many times. This is about me gaining internal personal power, which is what helps me fight back within the, fight back the family within me. Um, and it's the process of controlling me, not them. And I find so many people over the years work so hard to try to counter their family's controlling with their own controlling. And that often keeps you in a stalemate and keeps you stuck with the family inside of you. Using power in that way is not going to get you free. And that's why I like to share the uh, message of self-differentiation, which is the work of Murray Bowen and family uh, systems theory. And it, again, has been the most helpful for me, having gone through many different uh, iterations and modes and models of, uh, of help. And this has been the most long-lasting, helpful approach for me. So let's talk about the four ways. The first one is detachment work to fight back. Um, and I think it's one of the most important ones. It's that process of breaking the emotional bonds the glue, the super self that I'm a part of in the family, the emotional field that I partake of all the time with the family. That's what I'm emotionally all caught up in. And that produces systems feelings, um, trauma bonds, all kinds of things that happen within me as a result of all of that uh, glue of us all being together emotionally. And again, we can all live in four corners of the world and still be emotionally caught up or enmeshed or overly uh, connected emotionally to our family of origin in an unhealthy way. We are, we are attached often by pain, systems feelings, hurt, guilt, shame, and that trauma bonding that I've mentioned, that's what kind of holds us together. And it holds a big, there's a big hold within me as a result of those uh, emotional dynamics. And we want to gain personal power, personal authority over our own lives and our own inner lives and how we function in the system. Uh, because we want to gain that sense of self-empowerment to do that. But that requires growing up. 
and it requires doing these four things, if not more, these are just a few of the four things that I'm going to talk about today. There's a, a great book by Donald Williamson, and, and it's entitled The Intimacy Paradox, Personal Authority in the Family System. It's written, I think, primarily for clinicians or for practitioners, but I really think it is a book that lay people could read and, and would find a lot of help and interest. Uh, and be interested in what he's saying in there. I've done a lot of underlining in mine, and, and I've had it for years, and, and I just really like the way he talked about personal authority. And, and he kind of identifies self-differentiation as personal authority. Uh, and, I, and I like that concept, and personal authority within the system. And again, it's not authority over other people, it's authority over myself, as I function in the system. And, uh, and he explains more about that, Donald Williamson. We often think of what power can I use to change the system? What power can I use to stop the scapegoating, to stop the blaming, to stop the toxicity, to stop the reactivity and inner negative messages I have and emotional uh, content that I have as a result of the family and me and me being in the family. And we talk about what power can I use? And oftentimes people will try to use greater power to overcome the other power. And it's not power versus power. That doesn't work well in relationships. Uh, personal authority and self-differentiation is where the powerhouse is. That's where we really have a power, a house available to us. Uh, and so we think, how can I, what power can I use to change this? Jerry, how can I change my family scapegoating me? How can I deal with the scapegoating that's going on? How can I deal with the blame that's going on? And I said, I would tell them, well, that's part of the problem. You're dealing with it. And, and people go, well, what do you mean I'm dealing with it? Of course I'm dealing with it. That's what's going on. But when you're dealing with these emotional dynamics within the family, then you're caught up in them. We want to begin to learn to not deal with them. I don't want to deal with their scapegoating, someone else's blaming, I, I don't want to deal with that. The whole point for me to be caught and stuck is to deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. That's your side of the tennis net. It's not my side of the tennis net. And so I'm not going to deal with that on that side. Now, I will talk about what do we do in the relationship if it persists, and even if I gain greater detachment, which we'll be talking about. Uh, and we're talking about the detachment work. Um, so we want to not use the power, but use the power of emotional detachment, which is the source of real power in a system. It, and there are many clients that I've had that once they've gained a sense of detachment and are not as caught up in the family trance, the family rules, the family roles, the family uh, uh, negative dynamics, they go... I feel so much more empowered uh, as a person and even how I deal with it. When I care less, which is I'm not going to deal with it, when I care less, I am empowered more. Um, and then they are less in me. They're around me, of course, and we have relationships all around us, but they're just people. They're just not well people. But I don't have to deal with the pinging and inter-relationship uh, uh, struggles that I'm having emotionally that confuse me being an adult and being a separate person and, and acting out of my side as a tennis net, which is what I want to do, and not deal with their side as a tennis net. I want to stay on mine. And um, I remember always felt, I always felt so powerless 
except when I was reactive. Have you ever felt that way? Where, man, I'm just, res I'm just resigned, I'm just codependent, I just give in, I just want there to be peace, I wish they'd change, I try to... And then, when I get tired of that, then I become reactive, and I feel like I have some power then. I kind of re-energize. And with that reactivity, I think, oh, I feel some more power. The problem is, uh, but even when I am reactive, they are still pulling the strings the same as if I'm not reactive. Now I've just gone to the other side of the pendulum and become reactive. Though it feels more empowering because I'm more on the aggressive side. And so I feel like, oh, I've got some more power. But generally I'll fall back into the other category of being compliant, tired, resigned, uh, and so Family systems and, and self-differentiation, I think, offers a way to think about, as a friend of mine talks about, uh, the 90 and 90. Instead of going from zero, compliant, codependent, give in, passive, then over here to reactive, uh, you know, and being assertive in a negative way, aggressively assertive, uh, lashing out. So the 0 to 180, what we want to learn and what I think self-differentiation provides for us is the 90 degree mark, where I'm neither compliant, neither resigned, neither am I aggressive and reactive. I'm more detached, and I can be more adult-like in light of this other negativity and toxicity. And, and I think that that brings a sense less calm or more calmness, less anxiety, and we can begin to live that way, working on our detachment work and learning how to detach. And when we work with clients here, and when my associates and I work with clients, we help them to learn to detach so that they have less pain, less reactivity, uh, less hopelessness, less, less just being stuck. The second way we can resist that, resist the fighting back, the, we can fight back the family, is clarity work to fight back. Clarity work. Well, what, what do you mean by clarity work? And, and let me tell you a, a question I will ask. Um, I will ask a client, well, what kind of relationship do you want to have with your sister? What kind of relationship do you want to have with your mother? or your parents, or whomever. And they go, well, I want one that we care about each other, and we uh, support each other, and we love each other, and accept each other. And I'm, I'm going, well, is that the relationship you want to have, or is that a fantasy relationship you want to have? Because you just described the relationship you want to have with them in we terms. We want to do this. We want to be nice to each other. We no, when, when I ask that question, I'm asking, given the way your family member or sister or parent or mother or father, given the way they are, what kind of relationship do you want to have with them? Well, they, they've never thought of that. Oh, I don't know. I've never been clear about that. Exactly, and that's where we want to become more clear. Given this is who they are and how they operate or function, often as a result of many generations, what kind of relationship do you want? And don't give me a relationship that transforms them into beautiful people and wonderful people. That's just going to keep you stuck and yearning and wanting and also resentful, bitter, sad, disappointed, etc. Um, what values do I have that would guide my relationship and interactions with my family? What values do I go by? For example, I don't believe it's good to lie to other people. I don't think it's good to lie to other family members. They may feel it's advantageous or good to lie to other people. So what kind of relationship do I want to have with them? Well, 
First of all, I'm not going to lie. Those are my values. Uh, and also, I may not want to keep certain secrets because that's not my values. Um, that uh, I want to I approach the relationship based on what I believe uh, rather than, well, they just need to learn to stop lying. Well, wouldn't that be wonderful? I wish they would learn to stop lying. But that's less likely to happen. And so I want to begin to act the way I want to act as an adult. And so if I don't believe lying is, then I'm going to be sharing with them, this is how I do an adult mature relationship with you. And you may not like that. That may be possible that they, you may not like that. But that's where our detachment work has helped us to be more st uh, stronger in our own values and beliefs because we're less attached. And so there's less fear, less worry. Oh, but what if I say this? Then they won't like me anymore, or won't love me, or won't care about me, or put me down. Well, now, wait a minute. You're talking about everything they're doing on their side of the tennis net. Uh, that's their side of the tennis net. And just because it's going on on their side of the tennis net may not mean it's real. It's their perspective and their woundedness or brokenness that's causing that mayhem or chaos or distortion. It's not me causing it. Um, and so I, I can leave them over there going, you can be as however you want to be over there and I'm going to be over here. And what are my values? Um, and so, you know, how do I want to act as a mature adult with my family? detached, with boundaries, knowing when to exit and take exits, when the heat's too high and I don't like this, and I have that right, that's one of our assertiveness rights that we have, I can take a time out, I can stop, I can say I'm done, I can say I gotta go, I need to talk to you later. Sounds like it'd be better if we talk about this at a later time. Um, I also have values of, I'm not going to be judgmental. I don't, I don't think it's good to be judgmental, even of toxic, negative people. I don't think it's really good to be judgmental. Doesn't mean I want to be best friends, and I realize you're over on there on that side of the tennis net, and, you know, um, I don't judge you. you. You are who you are, and probably as a result of many generations, and you haven't worked on being different. That some people don't work on being different. And they may not have insight. They may have a personality disorder. They may have a psychiatric disorder. They may have all kinds of problems, substance abuse. Um, but that doesn't mean I have to stand for everything. I don't have to stand for everything that they do. Neither do I have to judge them. Uh, because judging them also keeps me attached. Uh, worrying about them is an enmeshment state. Judging them is an enmeshment state. Blaming is an enmeshment state. All of those comes out of our overcloseness when we do those things. Um, and then from clarity work, we move to number three, which is functioning work. Functioning work to fight back. So it has to do with now my functioning, not just my internal. Now what am I going to do? Um, I try to work on learning to think over feel, especially if there's enmeshment or um, real high anxiety. When there's high anxiety, I want to think and not feel. And I, I want to shut this down when I'm interacting with people if there's high anxiety. I can always deal with my feelings later. Right now, if I deal with my feelings right now and with them, I'm going to get all confused, reactive, who knows what I'm going to do if I'm in the feeling mode. So I want to be thoughtful as a mature adult. Um, the, uh, I want to be an observer. And like with Ross Rosenberg, we want to observe and not absorb. I want to observe how my family deals with anxiety in the family. Have you ever looked to see how your family deals with anxiety in the family? Who gets pinged? Who gets reactive? Who does this? You can actually, once you start seeing 
the system from a observer's point of view. You can sit at the holidays or whatever, and you can just watch this whole drama and play, uh, play out. And you say, oh, there's uh, aunt so-and-so talking to cousin, who then talks to mom, who then, and you can just see the anxiety going all the way around. And then dad gets upset, his anxiety gets up, and he does, and you can start to see how the anxiety is pushing almost everything. Um, and we want to observe that because that allow, will allow us to function better if we can see that and learn to do that. And we try to help people and teach people how to do that. And my videos have been to try to help you be aware of what's going on so you're not just observationally blind uh, when we're dealing with our family. Learning to set healthy boundaries. That's a functioning thing that we want to learn to do is to learn to say, and many you'll see that in many books and videos and 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 I want to say that the we set boundaries because someone's pushing us away and boundaries are a way to help not deteriorate the relationship more and many families and other people don't recognize that. I'm setting boundaries to stay in a relationship with you. I'm not st setting boundaries to um, because I don't want any relationship with you. I'm setting boundaries uh, to try and help our relationship because you're across the line or you are over on my side of the tennis net or you're not acting in a healthy, mature, caring, compassionate, neutral way and so I have to set these certain boundaries and and actually your behavior is pushing me away and boundaries are the way to stay connected believe it or not now they will see boundaries as unwelcome I'm sure but actually its whole purpose is to try to keep uh, relationships at some cordial or manageable level um, we want to also resist the pings of others. Are you noticing how the anxiety is going on in the family and then when it hits you? When do you start feeling anxious and, ooh, I hear them talking about so-and-so, Missy, and I hear them talking about Brad, and I hear, ooh, I'm starting to get that anxiety. And so you see that pinging starting to happen uh, when you feel that anxiety start to rise. And we want to resist those pains of other people. Uh, of course, living by your values, principles, and beliefs, which I have already uh, been uh, shared with you about how we want to live what we believe and our own values and our own beliefs. Also in functioning, one of the things that we also want to learn in our work of self-differentiation, resisting the family within us, fighting back, is owning our own subjectivity. If you really want to be powerful in a system, you want to own your own subjectivity. Objectivity is what you see. Subjectivity is how, how you see what you see. In other words, the meaning to what you see. Not just what you see, but the meaning to what you see. Without the need of others' agreements, without the need of others' affirmation. Uh, for example, if somebody is gaslighting, um, and, you know, they're, uh, and the gaslighting is not true. It's obviously not true. That isn't what happened. You know, they said... I left the soccer game and I was mad and that's why everybody's upset with me. Well, I never left the soccer game mad. I never, you know, I, I wasn't upset. I actually left for a different reason and it was because of this and this. So that gaslighting, wait a minute, that's not my subjectivity. My object, objectivity is this is what I did and this is why and this is how I understood it. You've got a whole nother objectivity or subjectivity going on. You have yours and I have mine. And I'm going to own my own. I will function better if I do that. And I consider this a process of learning to dance in a different way with your family. 
And uh, because it is a dance, it's always a dance. Uh, I tell people all the time, they go, oh, well, I don't want to have anything to do with my family of origin. I don't want to have anything to do with my family. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with all that. Well, if you don't deal with all that, then you will always be dealing with all that. Just like families, oh, well, we didn't believe much in feelings. Then probably everything that went on was based only on feelings uh, in a family. And so uh, there are books by Harriet Lerner, who was one of the first authors to come out with popular books on self-differentiation and Bowen theory. The Dance of Anger, she calls it the dance. The Dance of Intimacy, the Dance of Connection. And, uh, and I think those books, and I would recommend those, Harriet Lerner, and I would recommend those, but she talks about the dance and learning how to dance differently. And then fourthly is to heal your own wounds to fight back and to resist the family. Your family can't heal your wounds. I, I, I've just, at practicing as, when I was practicing as a marriage and family therapist and practicing as a pastoral counselor and a psychiatric family therapist and uh, an addictions family counselor, that families can't heal your wounds for you. Uh, even if they come around, to accepting and taking responsibility and, and asking for forgiveness, which is all wonderful. I would like all that to happen. But you still have to deal with your pain and your trauma and your wounds. We still must do that. And the good news is, uh, well, the bad news is your family can't heal your wounds. The good news is you don't need your family to heal. You don't need your family to heal. Uh, we must heal our own wounds and our own CPTSD and our own pain. And maybe there have been times in which you've tried to use your family to heal. And, um, you know, by confronting them, trying to get, get fixed or to feel better by talking with them. Or if I confront them and tell them, tell them all my feelings and, and how well has it turned out. Often it doesn't turn out well at all uh, because that we, when we're trying to do that with the family, there's an unconscious, unconscious message and, and sense that we're wanting to get our healing from them and they will resist that and they often act badly or, or become defensive or, and that's where it becomes a problem. And so we want to work on our healing and our wounds in a safe way. Healing also comes in healing the wounds by managing your anxiety and managing your detachment efforts, as I've said before. Managing that anxiety is so important. Go watch my video, Calmness is Everything. That's a long video, but it's, I, it's helped, I think, a lot of people in dealing with their anxiety and where they got it from, systems anxiety, and I really would recommend that video. We want to be self-aware, learn to become more self-aware, learn to become more self-defining, learn to become more self-regulating, and we do this awareness work, the grief work, the letting go work, the expression and owning of feelings work. Because on the one hand, I'm saying, don't shut your feelings down over here. But in healing, we don't want to shut our feelings down. We want to deal with those feelings. It's that this is an unsafe place to deal with feelings. This is a safe place to deal with feelings. If you would like to work together with me or one of my associates, I hope that you'll contact us. 